So you set up your stream. You get your overlays going. You get maybe a couple different scenes. Now you've streamed to Twitch a few times, and maybe you've gotten a follower or two. Maybe you've been lucky enough you've gotten a donation. But how are you going to be able to let your viewers see that? How are you going to be able to let them see their name flash across the screen when they, when they follow you or if they donate? Well, those are alerts. Hey everybody, it's Johnny and welcome to episode 5 of the Hottest Stream from your Max series. In the first four episodes, and I'll put a card over here in the top right hand corner so you can go check them out, we learned what software we'd need to be able to stream the PS4 through our Mac. We learned how to create an overlay. We learned about different scenes and how to switch in between them. Today it's going to be about alerts. Well, what is an alert? Well, an alert is a notification or something that happens while you're on stream and you want to be able to show that out to the world. For example, you've got a new follower and you want to show everybody on, that's watching you, hey, I got a new follower. Or maybe you want to show that you just got a tip, somebody donated some money to you, which is always nice, right? Anyway, those are things that can happen while you're on stream and we want to be able to show that. So let's take a look at an example. So I'm going to switch scenes here. And as I switch scenes, what we'll see is what I call my intermission scene. So if I'm not playing a game and I'm just chatting with folks while I'm streaming, this is the screen that they would see. On the right hand side is um, the chat. So that's where if we're watching on Twitch or YouTube and while I'm streaming, I can interact with the chat and everybody can see it. We'll talk about how to get that one too. But let's tell a follower alert. So let's say while I'm streaming, somebody follows me. Pretty cool, right? We got ourselves a nice sound. We've got ourselves a little graphic here in the bottom right hand side. Tell us who our new follower is. All right. Well, stick around to the video. But before we get into it, let me swap back to this scene here. And you can see down the bottom there, make sure to go ahead and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any videos when they come. Hit that like button. And also click that bell to make sure get notified when all my new stuff is out. Alright, so here we are back in OBS again. And as you can see, I made a few new scenes from the last uh, episode. We were using some Orbitron stuff and at the end of it I threw in some Visual by Impulse. Um, the reason why I brought in all the Visual by Impulse stuff and created all these new scenes is because the VBI package happens to have alert elements in it. So since this this episode of the tutorial is focused on the alerts. It seemed to make sense. All right, so let's go back to our in-game scene here. Now in our in-game in scene here, you'll see at the top of our overlay, we have pretty much the exact same thing we had in our intermission scene, which is a recent follower, recent, sorry, recent cheer. I can't read it because I have a light shining right in my eyeballs. <laughs> and all I see is a big <laughs> blurry spot where the words are and recent donation is here. <laughs> so pretty similar stuff. So how would we fill these in? And then where would we put an alert? So an alert, we'd want to have broadcast, right? So we want to, everybody to know that, hey, we got a new follower. Now, we don't want to take too much of the scene. So where would we want to put it? Well, maybe we want to put it down here. Or maybe we want to put it square dead in the middle of the screen. Maybe we want to put it up here in the top left. It really kind of depends on the game that you're going to stream, um, where you want to put these elements. And if you've watched my streams, by the way, follow me on Twitch. If you've watched my streams, you will see anytime a new follower comes on board that an alert pops up in different places depending on what scene I'm in. Okay, so let's get into the actual alerts and how to set them up. So we're going to need a couple of things. The first thing we're going to need to do is pick a service. And up until now, we've been lucky enough that everything we've done has really been local. So the first thing we're going to need to do is go to streamlabs.com. When you hit the login button, you get a choice to either log in with Twitch or log in with YouTube. We're going to choose login with Twitch. And since I've already connected my two accounts, it's going to automatically bring me in. The first time you do this, it might show you something different. Now where it brings you to is your dashboard. So the first thing we're going to see is we're going to go to is widgets over here on the left and that brings up these different widgets you can include in your stream. The one we care about here is alert box 
And if you remember back at the beginning of the video, I said, hey, we talk about chat. Well, that's right here. So this is how you would do it. So we would bring our alert box, just click on it, and it brings you to a bunch of different alerts you can use. Now you can see you've got some general settings, your follower alerts, your subscriptions, your donation alerts, your hosts, bits, so on and so forth. And you can set each one of these individually, which is what we're gonna do here. So let's, for example, go to my follows. Now my follow alerts is, this is the way I've set them up. So I set them such that I'd have a picture or an image with text in the image, how I want the alert to happen, fade in, fade out, you can fade in down, fade down big. There's a bunch of choices. I just left them fade in, fade out. You can play to your heart's content. The message. Now, the template here, this is the default one. These curly brackets are significant and they go with the variables. And if you've ever coded before, then you'll kind of understand this. But each one of these is, so this name is only a placeholder. And what Streamlabs does is it looks and says, okay, What's the name of the streamer that just followed you and replaces this curly bracket name with their actual name? If you want to have some text animation, you can choose it here. And here's where you'll put your image. So you'll, if you remember at the beginning of the video, I had my follower alert and this is the image I had. And then if there's any sound you want to use, you, change, you can use your sounds. Um, what the sound volume is going to be how long the duration is, uh, how the duration of the alert, so I've got it set for five seconds. Is there any delay on the text? So if you want the image to pop up and then you want the text to show up, you can set that here. Now, if you are a coder and you know CSS, you can enable the custom CSS and write to your heart's content. For the purposes of this demo or this tutorial exercise, I'm not going to, I'm gonna leave this disabled and we're just gonna use the default stuff. We also have fonts that we can choose, so whatever font you want to use, the colors you want to use in it, and you can have variations. So for followers, there really isn't a, a need for a variation. This variation really comes into play when you've got, for example, cheers. And if you want to give different variations for somebody who cheers 50 bits versus somebody who cheers 5,000 bits, that's how you would set it up. You'd set it up here. And now I can go ahead and change my alerts. So if you look at the follows, it's still got all the same stuff that I had before. So I'm gonna keep this the same. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to change my image here. So let's go ahead and change the media by clicking there. And you can see I have some, some different, uh, different images up, but we're going to upload an image. Okay, so the one we're gonna pick is the VDI, and we're gonna go into alerts, and we're gonna pick our follower, and click on open. And that will upload it here, so now we've got it in here, so we're gonna copy that URL. We're gonna select this one. Actually, we didn't need to copy the URL, so just click the select button, and there you go, and that's our new follower alert image. And what we're going to do is go down to our font settings. So click the little plus button here. And I don't know that white and red really kind of fit this theme. So we are going to change this. And all you have to do is click on this little, um, little square here and you can choose where you want your colors to be. So let's say that I want it to be you know, sort of this greenish and I want a darker green. It's kind of gray green. Just choose whatever image you, whatever color you want. And you know, we're gonna pick, we're gonna pick that one. Then all you have to do is click save. What you wanna do here is this URL, you wanna copy it. Now again, as before, it's hidden for a reason. So just like you don't wanna share your stream key, you don't wanna share your widget URLs either. But I've copied that widget URL. Now what I'm gonna do is in my source here, in my game scene rather, I'm gonna add another source. And this will be a browser source, so click on browser. We're gonna call this alert. Click on okay. And now, once this pops up, we just paste in our URL. And we can choose our size and everything else. So I'm gonna go ahead and blur this out in the video. But we paste in our URL. And we can leave the size, that's fine. If you want 800 by 600, 
your frame rate is fine. And if you have any custom CSS, again, if you're a coder and you know what you're doing and you want to play with things, go ahead and change that. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it. Okay. Now that you've done that, you've got your um, you've got your alert scene source rather. You got your alert source. So we can just go ahead and drag it, and we'll throw it here, like right in the center. And now what'll happen? We'll go back to Chrome, and if I click this test follow button, there you go. You've got this nice little alert that shows up right in the middle of your screen that says your new follower is now following. So that's Streamlabs. So the other one we talked about is Stream Elements, and the Stream Elements is actually I really like mostly because it works with Mac, whereas Streamlabs, you have to bring a lot of the stuff local with Stream Elements. It's all on the web, so everything's a, a, a browser. Again, when you get here, connect with Twitch. It's going to connect. I've already done this, but the first time you do this, it'll ask you to authenticate and make sure that you want to allow this app to manage Twitch. As you can see, it looks pretty similar. Brings you to a dashboard with some, some information here. Now, the difference between Streamlabs and Stream Elements is everything here is handled on your overlays. So you have to create a Stream Elements overlay to be able to use this stuff. They have some really cool overlays pre-made that are free, that are super simple to use. So if you just want to use, if you just want to use a very, very cool interface, for example, like you're an Apex Legends player and you want a pretty cool set of animated interfaces, here you go. All you have to do is use this one. So this one comes with your in-game and you can see that it's got some really cool overlays already built. It's got your, your intermission chatting screen. It's got a starting soon scene with a timer. It's got a be right back and all these are animated and stream ended. So, really really cool stuff that you can do very very easily to really get off the ground and running you're probably asking me johnny why didn't you show this first why isn't this the very first thing you showed us how to do well <laughs> because i wanted you to understand how to build these things up and understand what each component did before just saying hey you want to you want to set up overlays go ahead to stream elements click on this and you're done because you wouldn't have any idea how to change things what they all meant what we you know, if something goes wrong in OBS, what to do about it? Now you know. Okay, so what we want to do here is we can go to alerts, for example. And all these different alerts packages are free. You can pick any one of them you want. So I happen to already have this one here, this energy flow one. So if I go now, once I pick these things, I can go to my overlays. And you can see I've got a bunch of different overlays. So I've got this gray area one, and check it out. I've already got this uh, the super theme. I'm oh, sorry, the Apex Legends theme. I've got this purple theme. And again, these are really easy. So what you do here with Stream Elements is you have to use their editor. So now that we've chosen our alert package, what we do is we go into our overlay editor. And their overlay editor is honestly really kind of sophisticated and it. it's really pretty easy to use. It's just a drag and drop kind of thing. You say, what do I want here? Well, when you choose the alerts, a, a, a package that's already created for you, it's already done. So you can see here that there's a box that's an alert box. We go over onto the left here, we choose our alert box layer. You can see that they have follower alert, subscriber alert, tips, cheers, and so on and so forth. If you want to change any of these, Again, you just go ahead and click the little gear, and now you can set your image. So I can set the same image that I used before, that, that, I, that we just used on Streamlabs, or we can use the, the image that they have here. So one of the nice things about these you know, free alerts that, are come, that come with Stream Elements is you really don't have to do honestly much of anything. It's really, really simple. So, but if you wanted to, you would just change your video or change your image. You can also change the music. You can change the message that it is. Again, the curly brackets mean the same thing here. You can change the position and layout. You know, really kind of slick. And again, if you are a coder and you understand CSS, go ahead and enable it and start coding away.
you can change different text settings, you can change the sound, I mean, all the things you want to change, right? And so let's just go ahead and here you can test them. So we would go ahead and say, well, let's pretend there's a new follower. So you click on that and there you go. This is what would show up on your stream. Pretty nifty, right? Well, how do we get this? Well, that's easy. It gives you this overlay URL right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that. Go back to OBS, go back to my alerts browser source click on the properties and we are going to change the property from this URL to the new one provided by stream elements now that we've clicked OK we can put this move it right back into there where we want it to be you're gonna to have to play with it a bit to manipulate things around and move them to where they make sense let's emulate a cheer event there we go so we can see that just happened pretty instantaneously for that. And again, you can see it's a little bit off to the left and kind of small. So maybe we want to change this a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to move this over to the right a touch. And if you have a bigger monitor, you can stretch this overlay editor out, which will make it you know, a lot nicer, you know, a lot easier to deal with. Because right now I'm kind of, and you can also, if you want, you can zoom in and zoom out so you can Zoom it all the way out here to see what it, you know, see what it, what it looks like. So I can see, okay, it's a little bit low. So I put it more in the center like this. And I think what I want to do is I want to make this bigger. So I'm going to stretch it out, kind of recenter it again. So as you can see, it's very, very intuitive. You know, pretty easy to deal with, drag and drop type stuff. I'm going to click save again. And now that I've saved it, I'm going to go ahead and give this a test. So let's try that follower again. It's looking pretty good. It's right there, a little bit to the right of center. So again, we will just move that box, touch over here to the left. Save it once again. And make sure it got saved. Now we're gonna go ahead and emulate that follower again. And now it's just a bit too much to the left, but it, you can obviously, you, you see where I'm going with this, right? So just move that a little bit, save it off. You know, it depends on how, you know, anally retentive you want to be with it, but click on the emulate follower and there you go. So that's pretty close. So there you have it. That's how you go ahead and do the alerts. One thing you want to do is get this thing called stream labels. Now let's take a look at this here. Remember at the top we have recent follower, recent cheer, recent donations, stuff like that. You need this stream labels program installed and running to be able to do that. Um, so because we're on a Mac we would choose the OS 10 version of this. So you just click on this, and you download the, the Magic Little Stream Labs program and install it. I've already got it installed so I don't need to do it again. So here's that stream left. Let's go back to OBS. So let's talk about these. So how can we fill these in? Well, if we bring up stream labels, so the first time you bring it up, again, we're going to connect it with Twitch. It's going to ask us to log into Twitch. We are going to type in, you know, if I can remember my password, I never type it in. <laughs> it's probably not my password. Okay, so apparently I got it right, so we're going to go ahead and authorize Streamlabs. And then now you have to choose an output directory. And what this does is it's going to create a whole bunch of little text files that go into this directory. So go ahead and pick it. If you want, you can go ahead and choose your documents folder, whatever, it doesn't matter. For this demonstration, I'm just going to go ahead and choose documents. And there we go. So now if you look at this, you will see, and this is pulling information from Streamlabs because I've connected both my Twitch and my YouTube accounts to Streamlab, it gets all this information. So you can see I've got, you know, I actually just had a new YouTube subscriber just a, about a half an hour back. Here's some Twitch viewers, Twitch followers, all these other things. So if we look at the, if you go to that little gear, which I just clicked, here are all the things that you can use and these are all text files that are created. So let's close that. 
And now that this is running, what we can do is you go over here where it says recent follower. Okay, well, what is my recent follower file? Let's go back to Finder. And we will go to Documents. And these are all the text files that were created by that Stream Labels program. So, most recent follower. Let's take a look at that text file. Guess what? There's my most recent follower. This Twitch username, Stay Loaded. And by the way, I appreciate the follow. Thank you. So, how do we get that in here? Well, that's where we use another another source. So, we're going to go ahead and create another source. And this is a text source. So we choose text free type two. We're going to call this um, recent follower. And I can type recent follower. <laughs> Click OK. And just like before, we can choose whatever font we want. Um, you know, I'm going to go ahead and leave it at this font. I don't remember what fonts. Uh, BBI is using. I'm going to put it as a you know, size 10 font. Again, I, this might be no good. This might be really good. Here's where the key comes in. Instead of typing in your text, what you're going to do is click this little read from file checkbox. Now you have to go down here and you say, okay, where's my file? Click on browse. Now you clicked on browse, click on the documents. And now that we've gotten to documents, we will go down and pick the, oops, I went too far, the most recent follower text. Click on open. If you want to add any effects, you want to change the colors of the text, you can do all that here, just like you could before. And click OK. And as you can see, uh, that's ridiculously small. So we're not going to, we might have gone a little too small there. So let's change the font size. Let's do something a little bit bigger. Let's try 14, see how that looks. That's a little bigger. We can think we can even go a little bit larger than that. <laughs> Excuse me. Let's try 18. Click OK. And click OK again. And now, just like when we were building this out, we will go ahead and drop the text into our overlay. That's it. That's all we have to do. It's really easy, <laughs> and now you've got yourself a really professional looking stream.